superintendent will start off. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Ben Losky from the Department of Financial Services. Uh, in just a moment, you're going to hear from Chuck Bell from Consumers Union, and then you will hear from Governor Cuomo. Um, also with us today, I just want to introduce a few people. Uh, Andy Morrison from NYPERG, Bob Martin from DC 37, who has been just a great leader uh, on the issue we're going to talk about today, and Allison Puglisi from Staten Island, who has been a victim and suffered terribly because of the issue we're going to be talking about. As we all know, uh, Superstorm Sandy had a terrible impact on New York in terms of its unprecedented severity and geographic scope. At Governor Cuomo's direction, uh, the Department of Financial Services has taken a number uh, of steps to help ensure that no Sandy victims face foreclosure, bankruptcy, or other financial devastation simply because they got caught in the path of this destructive storm. We fought hard to expedite insurance payouts and push banks to get that money out the door faster to victims. We've worked with the banks to provide mortgage relief for homeowners struggling to keep up with their payments as they rebuilt their homes. And we convinced banks to waive various penalties and fees for missed payments by Sandy victims. But even after Sandy victims have run the gauntlet with their insurance companies and their banks and hopefully come out the other side, they're now facing another unexpected problem unfair black marks on their credit scores. The financial challenges that many New Yorkers are facing due to Superstorm Sandy can negatively impact their credit for reasons that are unrelated to their creditworthiness. For example, many homeowners missed mortgage or credit card payments due to Sandy, or they were forced to seek a mortgage modification in the face of mounting recovery-related expenses. These types of missed payments or mortgage changes, even if temporary, can often lead to lower credit scores. For Sandy victims, that's just not right. Credit scores are supposed to predict future payment behavior, but short-term blips due to a storm do not predict how consumers will pay their bills going forward. As everyone knows, an unfair black mark on a person's credit history can have serious long-term financial consequences, and these impacts can last for years and years and years. Worse yet, people often don't know their credit has been hit until it's too late. This issue is critically important because a person's credit score can impact everything from the rate they pay for a mortgage to their prospects for getting a new job. That's why, at the governor's direction, we are today demanding that the credit bureaus and FICO, the company that develops credit scores, take immediate steps to ensure that Sandy victims don't have their credit scores lowered for reasons beyond their control. We are also asking that they reset any scores that have already been improperly lowered. We've also requested that senior executives at the credit bureaus and FICO come to a meeting at the Department of Financial Services as soon as possible to resolve these issues once and for all. Let's not go through this again in future disasters. Lastly, we're going to work with the banks and other financial institutions who we regulate to ensure they are doing their part to, to avoid these unfair results. We need the credit agencies to fix their processes, and we also need the banks to carefully monitor what they are reporting to the credit agencies. The Cuomo administration believes no Sandy victim should face a hit to their credit history simply because they caught a bad break from Mother Nature and got caught in the path of this destructive storm. I'd like to now introduce Chuck Bell from Consumers Union, who has been a great leader uh, in so many consumer issues uh, coming out of Storm Sandy. Chuck. Thank you. Um, so I work for Consumers Union. We're the nonprofit organization that publishes consumer reports uh, based in Yonkers, New York. And um, I just want to say that Consumers Union is enormously grateful uh, to Governor Cuomo and the Department of Financial Services uh, for their leadership in protecting the financial rights of consumers in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. Um, they did a terrific job in making sure that the insurance claims adjusters got out promptly and, and helped people get their claims paid. Uh, and in particular, I want to thank uh, Deputy Superintendent Joy Fagenbaum and Superintendent Lasky for their leadership on these issues. Um, since day one, the Cuomo administration has been out there fighting for the rights of consumers. Um, so today we're talking about credit scores, and we all know how important a credit score is in so many areas of life, uh, whether it's applying for a credit card, taking out a car loan, or borrowing for college, everything comes down to your credit score. A, credit, a good credit score can result in lower fees and a higher quality of life, and a bad score can strap a consumer with unreasonable costs and become an unbearable burden. 
When Superstorm Sandy hit New York, many New Yorkers faced unforeseen financial hardships that were far beyond their control. New Yorkers should not have to sacrifice their credit scores as a result of the devastation caused by Hurricane Sandy. So we believe that Governor Cuomo is right to stand up for Sandy victims and to ensure that they are not unfairly hit as a result of the storm. Uh, again, we commend Governor Cuomo for once again advocating for New Yorkers as our state rebuilds and recovers from Hurricane Sandy. We join with him in urging credit reporting agencies to protect the victims of Superstorm Sandy. Um, thanks very much, and now I'd like to introduce Governor Andrew Cuomo. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first to uh, Superintendent Ben Lawski, who's been doing a great job at the Department of Financial Services in general, and in particular around uh, Storm Sandy and the, the victims of Storm Sandy. I want to thank him for his leadership and his service. To Deputy Superintendent Joy Fagenbaum, who's been uh, a great consumer advocate for many, many years. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with her, and I applaud her and her good work. Chuck Bell and Consumers Union, that, we're, that uh, everyone knows uh, how effective they have been on so many issues uh, for so long, so it's a pleasure to be with him. Uh, on this issue, first point is uh, to emphasize what the superintendent and Mr. Bell said, the importance of credit scores. And I think people still don't understand how important their credit score is and the impact that their credit score can have. Uh, we used to work on this uh, in the Attorney General's office. Uh, people don't check it, they're not aware of it, uh, and sometimes by the time they find out about it, it's too late. A credit score can determine whether or not you get a loan, an auto loan, a college loan, a mortgage, et cetera, and it can determine how much you pay for that loan. You have a score. You may not know that you have a score, but you have a score. Check the score. It's free. Uh, find out how you arrived at that score, and if there are any questions, you should resolve them now. Um, so the credit score in general, uh, and using this opportunity once again to inform people of the fact that they have a score and they should check it. Uh, on the specifics for today, uh, it would be a terrible injustice if a victim of Hurricane Sandy was then unfairly penalized by a lowered credit score, which again they could then be paying for the rest of their life. Uh, it would literally add insult to injury to take a victim who's working to put their lives back together, their home back together, uh, and say that there's an a in perpetuity liability caused by a reduction in the credit score when it was caused by certainly by a, a source outside of their control now the credit score is supposed to be predicting for financial institutions the likelihood that that person in the future will be able to pay their bills if a person was a victim of a hurricane, it has nothing to do with their future ability to pay their bills. Uh, so really on, on not just moral grounds, ethical grounds, but uh, on, on a reality basis. Uh, it is not a predictor of what you're going to do on a future bill uh, if you were late on a past bill because of uh, you were a victim of Hurricane Sandy. Uh, so the Department of Financial Services is exactly right to spot this issue. Uh, we suspect that more people have been victimized by this issue than may even know at this time because they haven't been checking uh, their credit score. But the Department of Financial Services is going to work with the relevant companies to make sure they're aware of it and that this is not the case. Uh, but as in most things, you are your own first line of defense. The consumer is their own first line of defense. You should check the score. It's free. You can go to the DFS website and find it. Uh, find your credit score. Check your credit score. If there's an issue, contact DFS now to try to work it out if it's related to Sandy. Uh, and once again, congratulations to DFS and Mr. Bell, and thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Questions? So, Governor, just to understand this correctly, are you compelling them in any way to change it? I mean, is, is there anything you can do in terms of enforcement? Well, the Department of Financial Services is literally going to call them in, as you heard from the superintendent, uh, and um, I don't see any reason why they're not going to be uh, to agree to this resolution because, as I said, their business is to provide a score that predicts, and being a victim of a hurricane is indicative of nothing except you were a victim of a hurricane. Um, so um, I don't foresee any con 
contest uh, on the issue, but DFS is going to be working with those companies. Is that right? That's right. I mean, we have other tools in our tool belt that are stronger if we need them, but I think we're at a stage now, as the governor said, where we're going to bring them in and try and work it out. Certainly logical and rational to uh, not be hurting people in this way, and that's how we're going to proceed. Could you do that? I mean, if you have sort of ways of telling them to do this mechanisms within your office and you haven't passed legislation, what route could you go to make it uncooperative? There's lots of different routes. I mean, it could be regulatory, it could be enforcement, it could be legislation, but I don't think we're there yet. I was a victim of Hurricane Sandy, and my home was badly damaged. I had to move out of my home, and uh, my life was disrupted. I'm living in a hotel provided by uh, government, and I wasn't able to pay the mortgage. I worked with the regulatory agencies. They have a program of mortgage forbearance. We actually have this literal case uh, where the bank agreed there would be mortgage forbearance during the, a certain period of time because the person was a victim of Hurricane Sandy. The credit rating agency was just notified of missed payments and therefore reduces the person's credit score because from the credit rating agency's point of view, you didn't pay the mortgage for four, five, six months and they reduce your credit score. Uh, issues like that, you had a vehicle, the vehicle was damaged, you didn't make the auto payment uh, and the credit score is reduced because you didn't make your auto payment. Now, it's true, you didn't make the auto payment. However, you didn't make the auto payment because your life was disrupted by Sandy and the car was damaged by Sandy, et cetera. So it, it's not a predictor or a valid predictor of your ability to pay a car loan in the future. It's just, it's apples and oranges. So you're calling for some kind of mechanism on the part of the other uh, agencies to say they should, there's some way that they should be able to recognize this person for this amount of time was right, affected by Sandy, so it looks not. Yes. We're coming up to the six-month anniversary of Sandy. So we're saying you should go check your credit score if you were a victim of Hurricane Sandy. Check your credit score. If there's a problem in the score, if your score was reduced, and it was reduced because of a Sandy-related situation, then you should contact DFS uh, and see if that score can't be returned to the proper and appropriate score. So you mentioned the six-month anniversary of Sandy. Not that I know of, Zach, uh, but I can check with the Sandy people after this if you'd like. Governor, was there a time, uh, do you think about a number of people who have called you to say, look, we're having problems with this, this is what's now happening to us, which has then propelled you to take this step? Do you have a number of people? Yeah, we've had uh, dozens of complaints, and uh, we're working on them. I think part of the problem here is the governor always says this to his team, you need to see the tidal wave before it crashes down upon you. And if we have dozens of people now who are uh, feeling this and complaining about it, it probably means a lot more people who don't know and aren't checking their credit scores regularly uh, don't know they have it. So we think it's probably a pretty broad problem. See, that is our fear because most people, despite all the admonitions, do not check their credit score regularly. I know everyone here does. I can tell by the expression on your face. The, uh, so they normally don't find out about their credit score until they go to get a loan. And then they go to get a loan, and all of a sudden, the credit score is lower than they thought it was supposed to be. And that's, that's when the issue comes. So if the department is getting dozens of calls now, you know that there are hundreds of people who have this issue that, that haven't spotted it yet. Superintendent? No, I mean, uh, we're not there yet. I mean, I think the answer is really if it depends on what happened to your credit score. And I think it's we're going to have to work with the agencies to unwind some of that, but uh, we're not thinking in terms of minimums and maximums. Have you reached out at all to the credit agencies and spoken to them? Have they indicated any willingness or lack thereof to actually make this happen or come up with a system to help verify the local information? 
you know, we're just starting the dialogue now. Um, they're hearing from us today, and uh, I think I'm very hopeful that, as the governor said, we will have a good, robust, fair dialogue, and hopefully we can get to the bottom of this and fix it. Rich? Uh, I was wondering whether you think that the credit scores or these credit agencies might be lowering credit rating unwittingly and not, uh, you know, not, not unwittingly, but without malice. They don't understand the circumstances, so they need to be informed. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that's right. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, this issue brings me back to my old attorney general days. You know, uh, sometimes companies just aren't aware of the circumstances and the facts. And I think uh, this might very well be that type of situation. There's no way a credit rating agency would really know who was a victim of Sandy and who wasn't. And they're notified of late payments and they make a determination just on those facts. Uh, and very often there's not an explanation of why there were late payments. Uh, there's just a the fact of late payments. And you will have victims of Sandy who were late in payments. You will have thousands and thousands of people who were late in payments. That will be a fact. They will be late mortgage payments, car payments, utility payments, uh, private loan payments. You will have had thousands of people who were late. And we understand that. But that shouldn't be held against them here because it's not a predictor of what they would do in a normal situation for the rest of their life. And that's what the credit score is really all about. So we don't anticipate an issue with the credit, credit uh, score companies. Uh, obviously, DFS is a regula regulatory entity, but uh, we don't anticipate a problem. I think they just didn't know. But on the flip side, I got No, Zach, I think the problem is going to be the opposite. People will not have checked their scores, and they won't find out that they have this issue possibly for months. Because people don't normally see their score until they're applying for a loan. So, and most people don't apply for a loan that regularly. Point of today, the challenge for DFS is to communicate to people, check your score if you were a victim of Hurricane Sandy, and make sure you don't have score damage as well as home damage, auto damage, property damage. Uh, and if you do, contact DFS now. Our fear is six months, nine months, a year down the road, someone goes for a loan, sees their credit score, uh, and this issue uh, will be over. Let's just finish this one. Just one um, what I know about credit scores, which is a very small symbol, but I, I, I have heard a Sure. Could I speak to that? Well, I think the issue around that is actually more whether you have a large number of credit inquiries. If you fill out a large number of loan or credit applications, that that can have an impact on your score. Um, I would also like to clarify that the, um, the, the free uh, report that's available to the consumer is the annual copy of their credit report. And there's one website that you can get that for free, annualcreditreport.com. There's a variety of other websites that try to charge the consumer extra fees and money for accessing their credit report. And so it's very important to point people to that website, annualcreditreport.com. And then credit scores are calculated using a variety of algorithms. And there's a number of proprietary scores. It's not, there's not just one single score, but the most dominant one is the FICO score. Uh, and not every consumer can get that score for free. So that's the one thing our organization is working on at the national level, is we're pressing for the legal right for each consumer to get a free copy of their credit score on an annual basis. And we don't actually enjoy that yet. So in some cases, consumers might have to pay a small fee to get access to their score. But I would agree that if you've been severely damaged, it's maybe worth it to your household to make sure that your score has not been inappropriately marked down. If you were able to make payments during the uh, Superstorm Sandy period, great. You know, if you have a positive track record of payments, that's great, but it's the negative record uh, that we don't think should be uh, considered during this period. And we know that there are some credit reporting agencies that are willing to, uh, to not look at that. So I, I think we need to clarify across the board if that will be the case with FICO and with others. Governor Cuomo, as we speak here, Mayor Bloomberg and, and uh, Police Commissioner Kelly are holding a news conference to announce that they've learned that the Boston brothers had plans to attack Times Square. 
know you haven't had a chance to get the details of that, but your general reaction to that, if I might. Uh, well, obviously, that, uh, that would be troubling news indeed. Uh, but I think the commis Commissioner Kelly would be the first one to say, um, we talk about the new normal for society in a number of circumstances. The new number, new normal from a policing point of view, from a security point of view, is you have to be constantly vigilant and constantly on guard. Uh, and we know that this city and this state are a target that we have been in the past uh, and we could potentially be in the future. So in some ways, yes, it's troubling. In some ways, uh, it's not surprising. Well, I'd re let me hear what the, uh, what the mayor and the police commissioner have had to say on the issue uh, and get that information, and then I'll comment. Local governments, Governor, continuing to complain about uh, having to live within a 2% cap, but not having cost drivers adequately addressed. Uh, any progress on that? You know, Zach, what we have is uh, we have problems in this state, we have problems in this country with local governments, cities, counties, that uh, have been unable to pay their bills for a long period of time. We have upstate New York, where you have a population that has been decreasing and governments that have been increasing, both in number and cost. And uh, that delta is, is the problem. And uh, we've been going through that for many, many years. Our solution has been we come up with an annual subsidy to get the city from one year to the next. But that just kicks the can down the road and hasn't really resolved it. We have to restructure those local governments so they're financially solvent. Uh, I have not wanted to subsidize the problem. I actually want to solve the problem. And they're going to have to do what we did on the state side, Zach. Uh, we had a very tough two years, but we had to clean house and we had to basically balance the books. And we had to come up with a formula where the state of New York was economically viable for the future. And local governments are going to have to go through that also. There is a, a, a bill that the legislature is interested in called binding arbitration for police and fire unions. And uh, this has started the topic, and I think it's an actual an opportunity for us to actually do something real, which I spoke about in the state of the state. Let's put together a financial restructuring group, a state board, financial restructuring board, and local governments that are in financial distress can come before the board, and this board will work with them to restructure the government so it's economically viable. Uh, and part of that would be working out the contract with their police and fire, which happen to be two of the main contracts that a local government will do. Um, and that's something that I'm hopeful that we can start to talk through this session. question is this, if a city is not economically viable, okay, the city has been shrinking, the number of people is reducing, the expenses are going up, so it's not economically viable, what do you do? You have to restructure it in a way that gets the structural costs down. I then say we should look at ideas like consolidations and mergers and shared services. And what function can we do on a regional basis that can bring down the operating overhead of local governments? But it's going to be that kind of outside-the-box thinking. And it's hard, and it makes people uncomfortable, but the status quo doesn't work. These units are just not viable economically, and they have to be restructured. The state can help them. Uh, I'm not going to facilitate the continued insolvency by giving them an annual subsidy so they go from hand to mouth. I've been looking for an opportunity to get the legislature to really focus on it, and I think we actually have it with this binding arbitration bill. Commissioner, you mentioned that it's you know, six months of understanding coming up. How do you think recovery is progressing? How the state hearing the Fed? Is that? You know, it, uh, I think it depends. This is a very personal question for people. Uh, some families, 
and some lives have come back together quickly and well, uh, and some people are up and um, up and running, uh, and almost as if nothing ever happened, and for them it's been fine. Um, some people are still very much in the midst of the recovery. You still have people in hotel rooms. You still have people doubled up. You still have people fighting with insurance companies. And for them, it's been terrible and horrendous. So I don't know that there is any one answer. I think the governments have been working together well. Uh, I think we worked, uh, we, we worked together well to get the sup what they call the appropriation, the supplemental appropriation from Washington, uh, $60 billion in total for the storm, more than half of which will go to the state of New York. Uh, that really uh, turned out to be important for us because we would not have had the resources, frankly, to pay for it if we didn't get the federal assistance. Uh, we're working well with the federal government and the local governments in actually making those programs work for people. But it's been hard. It's been harder for some than for others, but it's been hard. No, I have not. No, I have not. Rich? Same topic, but more generally. Uh, the role of cameras, of, of uh, security cams, in, in resolving the Boston situation, or at least uh, pointing to the suspect. Do you think there have to be more? I mean, there's a tension between privacy and the, you know, the ACLU and NYCLU. We'll talk about cameras. So there are 4,000 of them uh, in lower and midtown Manhattan. Do, do they need to increase the numbers in your estimate? Uh, what would your thinking be about that statewide? And you know, I think it is a, a local policing decision for the uh, police professionals in that locality. But at the same, uh, same time, in, inherent in your question, I think, is the point. There is a tension. We want to be secure. We want to be safe. We also want to live our lives. And we don't want to lose freedom in the name of preserving freedom, right? Uh, so proper policing, security, yes. But understanding the balance of individual liberty and individual privacy, and um, still being able to enjoy life uh, the way you want to enjoy life. Uh, I understand the uh, Boston Marathon situation. We came down, we had the, uh, a race uh, last weekend ending at the 9 11 site, uh, and there was some discussion well, should the race go on? Should the race not go on? But, you know, my attitude was we have to live, and society has to function. And the fear and the threat uh, shouldn't keep us from, shouldn't achieve just what the terrorists, frankly, are trying to achieve, which is uh, imposing that fear. So uh, it's a balance. But I'd leave, it to, I'd leave it to the local policing agencies, because every city is different, every county is different. Last question. I haven't spoken the to the mayor. I talk to the governor often. <laughs> he doesn't answer, but that's a different question. The, uh, I've had ongoing discussions and ongoing briefings uh, on the security situation, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you very much.